Hi guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com and I want to welcome you to another episode of the YouTube Shop Student where uh, a computer geek like me uh, attempts to learn how to use machine tools and and stuff like that. So um, so in this episode uh, we're going to continue on with some back uh, some back plate work and I'll, I'll bring the camera in here and show you what I mean here. Uh, in the last one, I believe I've done the uh, back plate for the four jaw chuck, and um, although that works fine and, and I'm, I'm using it, um, I, I have a three jaw that I need to do a back plate for. And one of the issues or things that I see as an issue is that uh, I don't feel like the uh, back plate in its present state um, catches enough threads on the spindle for me to be comfortable. And the reason why it doesn't catch enough uh, thread is the, um, and I'll show you here in just a minute is the uh, stub that comes off of the back plate is that, that's counterboard is counterboard um, quite a bit deeper than um, what it needs to be for my spindle. So I'll show that and uh, so my intentions are I'm going to make a, a ring um, that's uh, I got some two inch uh, aluminum stock that I want to bore I'm going to drill and bore um, an inch and a half and I'm going to try to get that very close to an inch and a half just for the practice and uh, will be cut off about uh, uh, a little over a quarter inch long and then turned over set on some parallels and face down to a quarter inch which should cover uh, the length of the uh, uh, the seat we'll call it on the back of my spindle so let me get the uh, uh, camera in position and I'll show you a little bit more about what I'm talking about so we'll catch you here in just a second I'm here at the uh, headstock of the spindle and there's a uh, flat surface here that the chuck plate would have to sit on and you see that there's a little boss that sticks extends out from that that the uh, back plate of the chuck or the back part of the chuck should register on and it helps uh, centralize the chuck onto the thread before it seats up against the back uh, face there and if we look mine um, is just shy of a uh, of a quarter inch so that's that's how I decided I want to make the ring a quarter inch um, and then if we look at this you can see back here when I come down to the thread well, hang on a minute hopefully you can see this is the back check that I have for the three jaw let's see let's see what we got here this is uh, one Two, two, three, four. So this is about uh, this is almost five eighths. Um, it is five eighths. It's five eighths of an inch uh, uh, counterboard. Which um, by the time you were to thread this on here, if you were to actually use this as is, you, you wouldn't be catching uh, much thread before you seated. And I don't know if you can see it here, but there's. Well, let me bring the camera around. I'm just going to move you. Hopefully, I don't make you dizzy. And we'll zoom you in. You see how much thread is extending here past the end of my spindle. So, you know, we're only catching a couple of threads. So to remedy that, I'm going to cut this uh, washer, we'll cut like a heavy washer, and we're going to stick on here. And then we're going to take the face plate and attach it to the spindle backwards like this here to seat up against the um, that washer that we make. And then we're going to face this back, leaving only you know just just about a quarter of an inch from the from the thread there. Uh, so we're going to take quite a bit off of this, about three eighths or so. So uh, that's that's the plan. So I'm going to get the four jaw set up um, with my piece of aluminum in there and try to get it centered, and we'll go from there. So I'll catch you in just a few minutes. Okay, so I have uh, have my piece of aluminum checked in here. Uh, it's two inch diameter. Have it fairly centered. You know, it might be off um, a little bit. So I'm going to start out by facing it. I'm going to go ahead and lock my carriage. 
so I get a good clean face. All right, let's get going here. Yep. Hang on just a second. Let me adjust my tool. that out. That's faced off. Looks good to me. All right, so let's uh, come up here and center drill this. So let me get the uh, center drill and everything, and I'll uh, be right back. Okay, so I'm going to step drill this hole. I have a number four center drill that I'll start with, and then I got a quarter, a three eighths, and then uh, the biggest drill I got is an inch. So I'm going to slowly work it up. Um, I'm only going to go in about three eighths of an inch. Um, I'm not going to make you watch all that. So let's uh, let's get going here. All right, center holes drilled. And change bits. So I'm only going to go about three-eighths of an inch. I'm going to keep swapping out uh, bits until I get to the largest bit I got and then uh, we'll come in and start boring. So I'll bring you back uh, on my last bit. Okay, well this is the largest bit I got. It's one inch. Uh, it's like a Deming Moore type bit and it's, uh, it's not that great. They're Chinese, but uh, we only got to go in three-eighths of an inch, right? So let's see what we get here. You know what? Let me, uh, let me slow that down a notch. If that helps. Now, uh, let me get the uh, boring bar set up and we'll, uh, we'll start boring this to the inch and a half. So, uh, it's pretty chattery, but I guess if we're going to bore it out, it doesn't really matter, right? And uh, let's see what our depth is. Should be around three eighths of an inch. Uh, 
yeah, that's right at it. So let me uh, let me get the boring bar set up and clean up a little bit of this here, and we'll come back. Okay, I have the boring bar set up here, and uh, now I'm just going to take passes until I get it to an inch and a half. So I'll take a few now and probably pause the camera and then finish it up, but you'll get the idea. All right, so I'm going to take uh, several more passes, and then when I get close uh, down the last few cuts, I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've been boring on this hole and um, I'm at an inch, 480,000, so we need to go to an inch 500. So um, I want to take, uh, take 10 off in this pass and then remeasure. Let it spring cut on the way out. Now let's measure it and see where we're at. I don't know how much you guys can see, but I do have a telescoping gauge here. <clears throat> It's, uh, it's not a very good one, but at least I got one, right? All right, so. Let's see what we got. I'm expecting to be about 490. And I'm at 490. 492 so that spring spring pass took a little bit coming back out because all right so I'm 8,000 shy so I want to take another four off the radius okay this should bring us pretty doggone close Let's check it. I could be a couple thousandths over, I think. Probably won't hurt anything on the uh, collar. I mean, this is just a spacer. And uh, this is just an exercise for me to see if, uh, you know, try to try to turn the size. Being still pretty new at this stuff. All right. And I'm at an inch five oh one and a half roughly. So that's good enough. I think we're right there. All right, so um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chamfer the outside edge and this inside edge so that they're not so sharp. And I have this tool here. Not sure what it is it's not 60 degrees but uh, it's uh, not 90 either so but I'm just gonna kiss this edge So, um, let's see, you know what, that, I think I can live with that, that edge is good. Um, oh, if I had a three corner scraper or something, I would bump the inside of the edge, but I don't have one. Alright, so, next thing to do is uh, to part this off, and um, so I have my parting tool, I'll have to square it up, and I need to make a line, so I'm going to part this at 375 all right 
Yeah, that's close enough. I'm gonna put a little line here. All right. Now, I need to make sure my parting tool is straight. And so I'm just gonna take a square and come off the chuck onto my tool holder and it's gotta be adjusted here. And I hope the stuff is in frame. Yeah, it looks pretty good right there. All right. So let's part this off. Now I did one little test piece. Now hopefully this will be all right, so we'll see. You know, I'm going to slow this down. A notch. Alright, let's try that. So, I'm um, pretty close, chattering pretty hard. I don't know if I need to speed up, slow down. I would think maybe speed up. Let me try that. And guys, uh, uh, you're welcome to send in some suggestions here because, well, you know, I am new. So, and I've got next to no experience cutting off, but let's uh, throw a little oil in there. Hopefully I don't wear too much of it. All right. Uh-oh. So I had a lot of chatter there, guys. Um, maybe you can tell me, was I going too fast? Was I going too slow? And where in the world in this pile of stuff? There it is. This is my ring. Okay. So here we have it. It's parted off. This is the side here that I want to put back in the chuck. So let me... Uh, let me uh, find my parallels 
and maybe clean up some of this stuff here and and uh, we'll get this faced off down to a quarter inch and go from there so I'll be right back okay guys so I've removed uh, my stock and here I've got some uh, these are eighth inch by seven eighths by three parallels I'm just gonna stick these here in the in the chuck and slide my piece up against them tighten my jaws back down not too hard because I don't want to crush them and uh, the important thing here is that uh, that I get this I'm going to try to get this bumped up against here and this is where I wish I had a um, All right, those parallels are tight. Wish I had a lead hammer, but I don't have one. All right, so let me snug this up just a little bit. I don't want to crush the ring. All right, let's see if I can get these parallels out. Okay. All right, so by putting the parallels up against the chuck, I'm hoping that uh, when I face this side off it, it will in fact be parallel to the back side. That's, uh, I think that's important. So, get my tool back on here. And let me adjust it because it's and uh Thanks again for making this T-slot nut for me, but it's, it's uh, been pretty helpful. So I'm going to face this off to leave a quarter inch. So let me uh, touch off here. All right, and lock my carriage there. And I'll feed in with my cross slide. All right, let me take a let me take five thousandths there. All right, get a measurement across here. I'm looking for a quarter inch, roughly. see where we're at we are at three about 365 so I'm gonna take off of, uh, take a few passes here all right so let's get a measurement <clears throat> I'm at three, three forty, and I want to go to two fifty. So I'm going to keep taking passes and until we get down there, and I'll speed this video up or something. Okay, that should put me at about three hundred. right there all right so I need another 50 off I want to take 20 all right so that should uh, put me within should put me within uh, about three, I mean, I'm sorry, about 260. 
So let's get a measurement on that. I should have about 10 left to take off. And I am at two sixty one and a half. So I'm going to take um, I'm going to take eleven, or I'm going to try to take eleven. And see what that does. Ten, eleven. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, I'm getting close to that truck. Okay, that's about all I'm going to be able to take off of it because I just got just a smidgen hanging out past the uh, chuck. So let's see where we're at. We should be really close to a quarter inch. And I'm at 251. So that's close enough, I think. Alright, so uh, let me pause the camera. I'm going to pull this out and uh, we're getting kind of long, so I don't think I'm going to be able to machine the... Uh, back plate in this episode to get in the next but at least we're prepared and ready to go but uh, let me uh, get the camera set up and changed around and I'll show you uh, exactly why I made this ring and how we're going to use it so I'll catch you in just a minute okay guys so uh, the ring is done now I did uh, have to um, deburr the inside a little bit and I just done that with a piece of this uh, high-speed steel this is a piece that Richard gave me so Richard say I've already put it to use buddy uh, with its default grind. So, <laughs> anyway, so this is uh, uh, when I turn this, uh, board it out to a uh, close fit um, on the spindle, and um, I, I put the uh, parallels behind it in the chuck uh, to help kind of try to ensure that it is actually parallel, or at least as parallel as I can get it. I've never done a job like this before. So, um, my, uh, my thing out to you guys, uh, especially experienced guys, um, you know, I had a lot about, I had a, quite a bit of chatter, uh, trying to part this little ring off, uh, after I finished it. I had some chatter drilling. I have, I suspect that it's, uh, my feeds and speeds. So, um, I, I know that should get better with practice, um, and whatnot. So if you have, uh, suggestions or, constructive criticism guys I'm all about constructive criticism that's how I learned so anyway the whole idea behind this is that uh, we'll slide this on here and it covers this little uh, uh, register on the chuck right so that will go all the way up on the chuck just like that and now recall that uh, you know I have a quite a deep counter bore here this is I forget what it was but uh, needs to be turned back it only it doesn't need to be any really any longer than a quarter inch so what this uh, allows me to do is uh, to take this since it's threaded all the way through I can take and put this chuck plate on backwards like so and um, it uh, seats all the way up against the uh, the collar that I just made so holding it flush so that way um, with any, with any luck when I turn this side down to reduce this counter bore down to something that's more appropriate for my spindle um, hopefully I remain parallel but now once this is screwed on uh, it'll get a facing cut on the other side too when we turn it down for the lathe but there it is and uh I appreciate everybody's support and and uh and patience uh like i said i'm uh the whole youtube shop uh student series is uh is about uh, a guy who uh caught an interest by watching uh, mr pete and and richard for making something from nothing and and uh you know you got you know all the guys right and the list goes on and on there's uh several guys out there have really demonstrated and taught so i thought hey 
um, I'd like to learn how to do that. And it started by acquiring the sleigh, then putting it together. You guys have seen those videos. Uh, and now I'm starting to do a little machining work. And um, thanks to uh, uh, a benefactor who's donated some equipment to me, um, we'll have a Burke number four. Um, I don't know if we'll call it a restoration rebuild, but I, my intentions are to build a, a, a bench for it and, um, you know, strip, de-rust, paint, put it all back together and, uh, and start learning how to use the horizontal mill. And in addition to that, he gave us uh, uh, a Logan lathe, and I think it's a Model 700. Uh, uh, one of the users, uh, uh, one of my YouTube subscribers told me where to find the um, serial number on the tailstock end between the V and the flat ways and he said his is about a quarter inch from the end. Uh, I do have some pitting and stuff there so if the number was there I don't see it. Now I got a couple high resolution pictures that I took of it hoping that uh, maybe I can come up with uh, something. But anyway that's outside the scope of this video. So again um, in the next uh, YouTube shop student video we should be tackling this back plate and getting ready for the three jaw chuck. And then uh, once we're done with that, um, I probably won't show it on camera, but I'm going to take the four jaw chuck back plate and do a very similar process uh, because it's, it's a little too deep too. And I'd rather get as much of the spindle nose thread on the chuck back plate as I can. So again, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing. If these uh, videos have been entertaining or useful, um, please like, subscribe, and share. Um, um, I am working toward that thousand subscribers and I'm over halfway now and and I have nobody to thank but uh, you guys. You guys have been a wonderful support to me in ways that I can't even uh, verbalize. So um, until next time, uh, take care of each other, uh, work safe, and have a blessed day.